Hi guys, on to our next project. This is the amethyst dendritic agate that I've already pre-foiled using a zigzag um, pinking shear and making sure it's good and burnished before we proceed and everything looks good. Here's my go-to solder. Right now, I am gonna try Silver Gleam soon. And the Flux that I use. And put a little bit of Flux in there. Go ahead and get this stone fluxed on all foil surfaces. While the Weller 100 is firing up to around 690 is my favorite temp. Have plenty of paper towels available. And this was um, tinned from the last time. So I'm going to clean that off before we begin. Again, I'm going to start on the back. Got my trusty old washcloth available. For a little bit better control when I get there. As you can see, it slips and slides around quite a bit. So I'm going to stop right now and get that up on here so we have a little bit better control. And as usual, I'm just focusing on getting the solder on here without paying too much mind to details at this point. I actually watched a little short video today of a stained glass artist um, and learned a little something new that I'm going to be using, which is exactly this. She just was kind of tapping the solder tapping the edges of the solder, holding it straight up instead of dragging it like that. She was just tapping like this and it really creates a much nicer little bead and it's smooth. So if you're looking for smooth, Again, never ceases me to learn something new almost every day. Put it on there. Give it a little tap. This can sometimes create texture if that's what you're looking for. little bit more flux right here. There goes my shakes when I least expect it. 
And you'll notice, I don't know if you can see it from here, but um, there's a little bit of a, a gap in between the zigzag and the straight edge. It's ever so slight. And I didn't fuss over it at the time when I was foiling. Maybe you can see it there. Because I figured I'd just try to get it um, almost bridged, which you cannot do with silver solder, the sterling silver. But you can sometimes bridge. Well, you can always bridge. And again, I'm going to use that tapping that I saw today. Hopefully that'll work. And fill that gap in. And that worked just fine. Covered it right up. So it's pretty much done. Um, and we're just going to add a little jump ring to this. And I think I will use a little third hand. So I always take wherever the seam is to put on the downside. We'll put a little flux on that on both ends. Put this in the little third hand. I guess I should bring, bring this more up here. Put that right down on there. Get a little bit of solder, drop it on there. Hopefully that seems to have worked. Do that. There's that. It's on there pretty well. So I think I'll try and get a little bit more down in here just to make sure we have a good connection. So just a little solder. Let's see. It's going to be really hot. You just have to always remember that. I want to kind of try and get this a little bit better. I'll put a little extra flux on there so I can And that's 
smooth. So I will be back after I clean this up. And we'll put the side on a on a cord or a chain. Okay, hi, I'm back. Got the piece all washed up, so now on to the next part. But before that, we're gonna go ahead and take the time to tin our tin our tip and put it back in the holder and turn the soldering iron off. And here is the cleaned shiny piece. Yay, so pretty. It's transparent. If I was better at filming, I could show you by holding it up to the light. Maybe next time I'll get a flashlight and I can do it that way. But um, I think it turned out lovely. And um, you can always add some antiquing to it, but we'll do that in another one. Here's some of the fun stuff I enjoy, is figuring out what the final product will look like. Because there's all kinds of different bales and stuff you can buy. I get most of my stuff off of Amazon. Um, you can use charms. Um, that would look kind of cool. Wouldn't that look cool on there? This kind of little bale. They have these tube kind of bales. It's got these kind of bales, and then you just need another little jump ring. This is interesting. This is pretty elaborate, a longer one. So let's see what some of this would look like. It won't take up too, too much time. But and here's a, a bigger, uh, like a cable chain, I think it's called. Um, so, here's kind of what that would look like. Or this kind. Mm -hmm. None of them look bad. It's just coming down to personal preference. Here's these other little like pinch bales. Sorry. Um, let's see. I think that's really cute. It would, li it would line up correctly. Could do something like that. But it might be too much since we have all this on here. What about a black cord? Let's use this big tube one and see what that would look like. Oh, I kind of like that. Great thing is we can always change it if we don't like it. So I have an itty bitty little jump ring. I think that's probably a four millimeter. And excuse my shaking. This is always the hardest part for me because I have the tremors. And you always twist your jump ring. Probably didn't get that good enough. I'm going to put it on there. And then through this one. Hopefully we'll have enough room and I won't drop the piece. Ooh, that's a first of me trying to do anything like this on film. Like I said, it's all this stuff. Usually I'll brace it up against my chest or something, but. And then you twist them closed. Make sure that's good and closed. I like it. Let's move this stuff out of the way and see. Cute. 
can always zoom in. What do you think? I like it. I like that. Okay, that's it for tonight, guys. We'll be on to one of the other ones soon. Thanks for watching.